Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it would be safe to assume that everyone in this room probably drives a car and uh, pays like car insurance premium. Um, just so that you know, like you know, typically the insurance companies they will charge like based on uh, they will assume you'll be driving around twelve thousand miles per year, and based on that your premium is calculated. Uh, and then there was a concept called as like paper mile for uh, for those drivers who do not drive twelve thousand miles per per year uh, to reduce the cost. Now you might be thinking like why I'm talking about insurance. Now I'm not trying to sell you any insurance over here, but in data centers we see similar concept on the cooling side. Our data centers, like when we design it and when it's operational, we typically design for 100% cooling capacity, but never is the case that that 100% cooling capacity is ever used. Um, so what we do is like we end up in paying this like upfront capex cost, which probably will never utilize. And on an average, if you look around the industry, the average utilization is around 60 to 70 percent at best. Sometimes you can push it and then uh, to like 75, 80 percent, but that's where you start have uh, start looking at other issues, and that's where um, your typical usage is capped. So we are paying for like uh, the capacity that will never be used, and how we can solve that problem. Today, along with my colleague Juan over here, we'll be talking about one of the potential approach that can help mitigate this problem, which is utilizing a frame-based deployment for red or heat exchanger. Essentially, it's like paper, uh, paper usage concept that we'll be talking about. So before we go forward, I would also like to acknowledge uh, Jared and John, who have also contributed towards this project, but who are not here presenting with us. <clears throat> So uh, we'll start the presentation on, uh, I'll start the presentation over here defining like uh, why we need to do this and why this is a problem and how we can approach it at a high level concept. And then towards the later part of the presentation, my colleague Juan over here will go deeper into how we can turn this concept into actual product and uh, how we can utilize it. So traditionally, data center industries have been, uh, for decades, they have been uh, using air cooling as a standard product. Uh, heat exchanger, as we have seen in the before, they are being available. It's not a new concept to the industry, but we have uh, rarely seen deployed in a traditional data center. Uh, but with AI ML learning, one ad other advantage that we get is like now the facility operators are getting comfortable and getting warm up with having facility water inside the data hall solutions. Now, this uh, could be a potential right approach where we can develop a concept based on red door heat exchanger, which is modular and uh, which is scalable and also provides the required flexibility that we want to use and then save on like CapEx cost. So let's see how we can uh, deploy this solution. So what you see on the screen is like a traditional air cooling approach where you have an IT rack, you have cold air coming in from the front, it goes through the, uh, it goes through the server, picks up the heat, and then uh, hot air is released back into the hot aisle and then it gets processed for, um, you know, and then, and then it, it comes back for cold air. In a red door heat exchanger, what we do is like we take a cooling, like we take a, uh, heat exchanger mounted directly at the back of the rack. That's why it's called as red door heat exchanger. And now you have facility order going through it, which provides uh, cold air, which is again like re locally recirculated around the rack. So uh, essentially what we are doing in this case, you are uh, uh, condensing the hot aisle, uh, a, tr a traditional hot aisle into like a gap between the IT exit and the RDHX inlet temperature. What we are proposing over here is let's decouple uh, from the, let's take a different approach, let's move away, away from the traditional approach and decouple the red door heat exchanger from hardware rack and make it a facility based approach. What does that mean? So on the, uh, on the slide you can see the very last figure is we have a frame based heat exchanger which is probably bolted or which can be rolled down. Or there are different ways you can uh, adopt this solution. Uh, you have this frame base which is uh, bolted to the data hall and then you have a uh, heat exchanger attached to it and then the rack comes in and out. It's something similar to like what I have like over here, right? like the mic, uh, it stays over here, the speakers they come and go, similar concept. So in this case like mic would be a frame based heat door heat exchanger and myself would be, if you can imagine, a rack that will be replaced every five years. 
what are the benefits of doing this kind of uh, uh, this kind of adaptation? First of all, like when you have like a traditional data, uh, you have a perimeter air cooling, or you may have like other forms of uh, air cooling. So you need a separate mechanical gallery for it, uh, which increases the footprint of the data center. With red door heat exchanger, since it is mounted right at the back of the rack, you can reduce this. Um, data center footprints, which has like added benefits of like sustainability and reducing the cost of the overall data center itself. Uh, in our experience, we can see we can reduce the data center footprint depending upon the size anywhere between like 10 to 25% of your original uh, footprint. Second thing, it immensely simplifies the design. Imagine your data center doesn't have hot oil containment. It is a, essentially a room neutral solution. So you don't have to worry about like uh, tech operations or tech services that are taken in, into like hot oil, especially like operating in 40 degrees Celsius or that environment. And again, it's a cost savior. The third is like what I was talking about is the deferred uh, capex spending. So on day one, you have these frames installed in your data center. You don't have any racks. You don't have any heat exchangers. It is always known, well known in advance, like when your racks are going to land in the data center. So at that time, you can align your data uh, your rack procurement with heat exchanger. You can install those heat exchanger, and then you can just roll in your rack uh, like how we have been doing traditionally. So this is the concept that we have looked at it. And now let's see how this concept can be transferred into actual product. So I'm here to talk a bit about the mechanical features. What you see on the right hand side is basically the rear door heat exchanger frame, or what I will call the frame. And it's made of cold rolled steel, like the rack. It weighs around 130 pounds. And you have 2.3 to 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 meters. This is the size based on the rack. Now, let's get into some details. If you zoom in at the bottom right, you can see that we are leveraging ORV3 casters, leveling feet, and stabilizer features. This means that when your technician comes in, they already know how to use this, and they can move it easily. Alternatively, there's also the opportunity of having this bolted down in the facility to ensure it's set. Now, if you look at the sides, we have some air gasket covers, as well as air gaskets. These are you know, very low density foam, which work like if you have windows at home, you just cover it up so the air doesn't come in or out. In this case, we essentially don't want the hot air to come out before passing the rear door heat exchanger. At the same time, we have some at the top and the bottom too, to make a full 360 seal. And we also ensure, um, we also have the, right and left of the air gasket covers be guides for the rack. Note that these in DC type one for Meta, we have you know, really tight space, but in future, it could be different. Now on top of this, we mount the door, the rear door heat exchanger door. Its dimensions are 2.2 by 0 0.6 by 0 0.3 meters, which is also similar to the rack, and it allows for up to 44 OU or smaller. And there's also gasketing around this to ensure that it's fully sealed. Now, of course, we have to have some features on the frame to ensure that we're able to interface with the door properly. For example, we have a top hinging mechanism, which allows the door to swing open. And it's also supported at the bottom. This allows you to open it up and remove any gear that you might need to service. Additionally, we have brushed strips for hoses, which is where your facility water is coming in from the top, and it has to go to either the rear door heat exchanger or your gear, if you're liquid cooling some of the gear. And it's flexible because it has one on each side, which brings us to another way of doing the hinging mechanism. Essentially, you can have hinges mounted on the door as well as on the frame in order to hinge. You can have this on the left or on the right in order to open whichever direction you prefer. You can also see this at the Experience Center, which, where we have shown both to show the flexibility. When the door swings back, though, you also need it to close. And that's where this comes in. Essentially, having a door pin and frame hook allows you to close the door. While not shown in the Experience Center, you would have it on the opposite side. If you have hinges on the left, you would have the closing on the right, and vice versa. So far, we've talked about um, the this mounting feature, but you also have an alternative frame hook, which allows, depending on how you design your door, to open it and close it as desired. And this is open for um, 
sorry, we've talked about the frame and we've talked about the rack, which is going to come in after, right? So this is the ORV3 rack and it has the gear that pays the bills. It's all in black and it's butted up. And essentially by this level, when you have it at the data center, you have leveled it with the leveling feed, set it up together, and the gaskets are in compression. So it's all set. Now if you imagine an angle coming from the top, you can see the frame at the very bottom and the rack at the top. And if you zoom in a little more, you can see the air gasket covers that we were talking about before. You essentially have the rack coming in and both gasketing in the center as well as on the side to ensure you have no air escaping. Now that we've considered a single rack, you can consider what happens when you bring two racks together. And here comes a point where you can leverage the features on the frames for several things. Firstly, you can make sure that the racks are positioned at the right distance. And secondly, you can also have lateral support for the, for the frames themselves. Remember that you can also have the facility infrastructure take care of this. Essentially, you could have overhead facility infrastructure connecting to the frame itself. And we need to remember that when we're bringing a rack, we're basically putting some force. And this is where the FEA that my coworker Jared did is very helpful. So you're walking in your rack, it's around one meter to 1.6 meters per second, and it stops in around one second. That's around 500 newtons of force. As you can see on the left hand side, we have blue at the bottom, which is fixed. And at the very top, it's in red. It's the biggest displacement. And it's around four millimeters, which means we don't have that much to worry about here. On the right hand side, you can see the stresses, which are more important. But at the same time, the stresses are relatively low. For cold rolled steel, we're talking around 350 megapascals of tensile strength. And we're way below this. The second thing we have to consider is essentially if we put a door on this. It's a hun around 150 kilograms of force, uh, ar around 150 kilograms of weight, which means 1,470 more or less f newtons of force. If you look on the left, same picture, you have a deflection of about 0.5 millimeters, which means, again, not much to worry about. And on the right-hand side, you have the stresses concentrated. However, it's a little hard to see, which is why I would zoom in here, and we can see that they're concentrated where you hinge the door and at the different spaces for the hinges, and it would be the same at the bottom. At the same time, we're below 140 me megapascals, which is well below what we need to achieve. This slide also helps you see the deflection, exaggerating it a little so you can see how it would react. Now that we know it supports the weight, we can talk a little bit about how we would feel when you move the rack, which is where the center of gravity comes in. You can see that it's a little below the center of the rack, which is good for stability, and it could be lowered more if necessary. At the same time, keep in mind that we're considering that the center of gravity of the door itself is in the center, and this means this is only possible because the bottom of the frame is where most of the weight is concentrated. Now, if you imagine looking down from the hot aisle, you have a rack on the left and on the right. It's around 0.6 meters protrusion and we have 0.8 meters. That means you have 0.4 meters for your um, technician to walk through. At the same time, remember these are for DC type one. In the future, these may vary. Now, to wrap it up, let me show you one more time to solidify the picture. You have your DC facility water coming in from the top. You bring in your rear door heat exchanger frames. You bolt them down or you stabilize them, and then you can put the, the doors. Or you can have the doors come in with the frames. It's really flexible. Finally, you bring in your racks, and you can see you wouldn't necessarily have racks in each space or rear door heat exchangers in each space, which is where the flexibility is really important. Of course, this wouldn't be OCP without a call to action. So we want your input in scalability, integration, and operation of rear door heat exchangers. To learn more, the wiki is above, as well as the mailing lists. And we highly encourage you to check out the prototype in the Experience Center. Thank you for listening, and have a great evening. It is time for the block party, but um, there's no one after you, so if you want to take questions, if folks want to ask them, then that's up to them. Thank you.
you can ask now, or we'll also be available at uh, the Experience Center. Yes. Thank you.